Hey guys, what is up? My name is Eric, also known as Aviator, coming at you live once again from my home here in Central Florida. Now, today it is Friday, and on my channel that can only mean one thing, Photo Fridays are back with us live once again this week with, well, you probably guessed it by now, black and white images and what you can do in a world without color and what makes it special. I'm a huge fan of black and white, using light and shadow to just depict every possible element of uh, the beauty of life. So guys, I hope you enjoy this episode. This is the shortest intro ever in the history of Photo Fridays. But stay tuned for a very special outro. I do wanna to talk to you guys a bit about my PC unboxing video from yesterday. And actually, I have some really cool announcements coming later on this week about my new Aviator Daily channel and a Minecraft server. So I'll talk to you guys soon. See you at the first photo. All right, guys, here we are. First image, as promised this week, we're gonna talk a lot about black and white or monochrome images, as well as a few of the things you can do to make your black and white images pop and look even better than ever. One of the most important things I can encourage you on is increasing your contrast or making your blacks true black and your whites true white. There's an incredible, incredible photographer named Ansel Adams who sadly passed away, but he's left us with many of the world's best photographs, including shots of Yosemite Valley that are absolutely stunning. And he was well known to spend weeks and months inside of the dark room, burning and dodging his images, making sure that the, the darks were dark and the brights were bright to truly capture what your eye actually sees. Now for me, that's a really cool thing. And I gotta tell you guys, it is not easy. He impressed me so much that I've learned for years now, or I've worked for years now, to learn the skill to really put that amount of work into an image. This shot you're looking at right now, however, did not take that much work. I just shot it in camera this way. I set my black and whites up so that they had high contrast with a red filter, a red tone filter, so that the reds turn black. And it's, it's a really kind of an interesting thing to do. If you have a, the ability to do so, test it out, see how you like it. But then last thing I did was in editing, I warmed up the image. And by that, I mean I added just a slight bit of warmth to the image or uh, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange to it. As you can see there, that it takes a dreary black and white shot. Here's the black and white version, and here's the warm version. Takes that dreary black and white version and makes it just sing. I love it. It's one of my favorite shots I've ever shot. It's of the F-117 stealth fighter at the Miramar Air Show in San Diego, California. And I gotta say, there's just something about it that, uh, that evokes this, this happy time in me. So with, anyway, with that in mind, just remember that all you have to do to make a really striking black and white image is avoid low contrast, and don't hesitate to warm things up when necessary. Here's another quick warmed up shot that should help you kind of get an idea for what I'm talking about. This is actually the Space Needle in Seattle, as you guys probably can recognize it, if you, especially if you live up in the Pacific Northwest. I love it up there. It was a cloudy day, big shock there. And I took this image in black and white, once again in camera, and then just warmed it up just a bit. Now, to move away, from some of these warmed up images. I want you guys to see a shot in San Diego, California from a couple of years ago as well. This shot is luscious. They're reenacting their engagement, engagements happening, him asking the question. And as you can see, the black and white completely separates them from the background. I'm also shooting a really low aperture. I think I'm shooting at f1.2 here. So really, really, really short depth of field. But the way it cleaned it up, I adore. Here's another shot from that same session. You can actually see this cup a little bit closer up. And this one's warmed just ever so slightly. Again, heavy, heavy contrast. As you can see below her hair on the right side of her face, it's completely black. His hair, completely black. The back, the bottom right corner, completely black. But when you're looking at all those things, his shirt is almost completely white. There's a little bit left in there. It's not completely overexposed, but it's something that I wanted to balance these two different sides of light. So remember, high contrast is a very good thing. All right, true black and white. Once again, back up in Seattle. This is a fish market, actually a very famous fish market in Seattle. It's great up there. I gotta tell you, their crab off the chain. Sadly, I'm allergic now, but I, I, shellfish is like my favorite food in the entire world. But as you can see here, I was able to take what was kind of a boring scene uh, with lots of ugly light, and by shooting it in black and white, it becomes this very smooth, relatable image, which is what I was going for. Now, a few more off the wall shots. I'm gonna share lots and lots of photos with you this time, guys. I wanna share one of my friends, Jason K, who's an incredible artist from down in Miami at a, at a Irish pub he was playing at. Here's the first shot of him you can see. He is just leaning forward, raked out. This is using a couple of other elements in the shot. I'm gonna walk you through them really quickly. First off, if you notice, his arm has a bit of a blur. That's because he's moving, all right? I'm using a slow shutter speed, I think around a 30th of a second. Very slow shutter speed. Now the shutter speed allows him to move, but I'm popping a flash, so I freeze the majority of him. But anything that's moving fast enough, you'll see a bit more light behind. 
okay? So slow shutter speed with a flash on the outside creates that kind of look right there. Here's a couple more from the same night, actually the same song. Him just absolutely looking bonkers and insane, which I'm okay with. He's kind of a crazy guy. And then him jumping which is actually also a little bit out of focus, which since I'm shooting in black and white, that becomes artistic instead of a mistake. <laughs> That's a good thing. Now again, guys, I really do encourage you to shoot black and white in camera because it will challenge you to make sure that you have the shot you want the first time. That video you saw at the intro and the video you watched the outro of this, they were both shot in black and white originally, which is not always the smartest thing to do. A lot of people are gonna encourage you to take the safe way out and add black and white later. My encouragement is no. Think of it like you're shooting film. When you shot film, if you wanted black and white, you had to shoot black and white film. You couldn't shoot color film and then convert to black and white. At least no one really did. I suppose you could, but no one really did that because it was pointless. The whole purpose was to shoot black and white. Plus it was way cheaper. So with that said, I wanna show you a couple of more images that can kind of show the softer side of black and white and some things that you can do to convey emotion with it. First one is from Texas. This is down in Central Texas, Wimberley, Texas, one of my favorite areas, in fact, of the country. Uh, Wimberley is just gorgeous. And this couple is in their engagement session. And you can see I'm shooting at like, I think F2.2 here. I wanted to get both of their eyes in focus just enough. And as you can see, they are. They're lit really, really cleanly. Again, true darks or true blacks, true whites, really pretty image. I love their personalities in this. You can see so much. Plus, because I'm shooting in black and white, instead of being distracted by different colors, you're able to notice his freckles, her nose ring, you know, the silly things that matter. All right, next shot. This is my cousin. This is on my epic surf trip south. On the way south, my cousin flew out to drive back home with me. This is right after we left from Seattle. And as you can see, he is looking quite something i'm not sure <laughs> which is call him happy uh he was he was pretty silly and uh he was just jumping around it was snowing it was just awesome and i just love this because it just seems playful and joyful and that's what i like i like to capture peace and joy and all those wonderful things at once so uh, one last image this is actually an image from a shoot you guys have seen before our sunset bride from a few episodes ago i don't remember which episode exactly this is her trash the dress session and as you guys can see the trees in the background here along with the sky make this image absolutely crazy this one's been warmed up quite a lot but again i'm following the exact same rules true blacks true whites and I'm doing all that I can in this shot to make it look like an African safari because I really, 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 really want to go to Africa. In fact, if I have any African viewers, let me know because I want to go to Africa so badly, it's ridiculous. Anyway, guys, thanks again. Here's the outro. I'll talk to y'all later. Best of luck with your black and whites. Welcome back. Great to have you here. I hope you enjoyed this week's Photo Friday episode. Before I get, let, before I let you go, before I go, and before I let you go, I wanted to let you know that there's a couple of really cool things coming up. First and foremost, I hope that you saw my PC unboxing video. If you didn't, there's a link to it on one side or the other over here. Uh, definitely check it out. There's lots of fun shenanigans in that because uh, I couldn't figure out how to turn it on, which is kind of a fail. I'm a total PC noob, but uh, I'm having fun with it, and I'm excited about having this whole PC thing going on now because I'm learning the whole keyboard and mouse and, and such control shenanigans so that's good uh in other news i actually wanted to let you guys know i'm working on my let's play channel which is youtube.com slash aviator daily uh, i'm not officially announcing it yet except through this little outro so in the next couple of days you can expect to see a video come out with the announcement for this and this is just kind of a little let little tidbit to let you guys know man i can't get my words to work guys sorry a little tidbit to let you guys know who are my serious fans who watch my photo fridays that you can get access to this site or this site or this channel first uh the link will be in an annotation somewhere on the screen go check it click it subscribe to aviator daily and uh, check it out in addition i actually just launched a minecraft server it can hold 200 people right now and all the details for that will be released next week. So really cool stuff going on. Uh, I'm really excited about all of it. And I've got some really neat adventure videos coming soon. In fact, my little sister, Rebecca, is going to take you guys skydiving. So that should be cool. Anyway, guys, I will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much for watching and for putting up with this long outro. As always, it is a true pleasure. And I hope that I can talk to you soon. See you all later. Bye-bye.